All right, good morning, everybody. I hope you're having a great day so far. Today, we're going to be completing our hominid chart um, on early human species, okay? Um, we're going to have a little fun with this one. There are going to be some extra credit opportunities throughout the learning video um, for you to ask your parents um, some things or come up with your own um opinion on something. Um, so the first early human species we come to is Homo habilis. Okay. Their nickname is handyman because they created like the first stone tools. Okay. They had ape like arms. This, the physical characteristics, you would write that under physical characteristics for Homo habilis. Um, you just fill in your chart as we go. Okay. Um, so they had ape like arms. They're about five foot tall, about a hundred pounds. So kind of skinny, right? Um, they emerged 1.9 million years ago in Africa. They had no spoken language, okay? So that's going to be a hindrance for them, okay? Could have led to their extinction. We don't know. Um, they gathered fruits and plants for food. Their dental records show that they could have ate um, hard, leafy, woody um, plants, and they were scavengers for meat. So pretty disgusting. They were kind of like vultures. They see a dead carcass laying around and they just go enjoy. Okay. Um, the first remains of Homo habilis era was found at Aldivise Gorge in Africa, right, by Mary and Louis Leakey. They are this husband and wife archaeologist duo um, that spent 20 years in this gorge without finding anything. Okay. Your sole purpose and your sole job, um, is to go and excavate these sites. Um, and you go to work every day for 20 years and find nothing. That would be super defeating. Um, this right here is a little animated series of Mary Leakey um, and her find. Okay. I've never really thought footprints are terribly interesting. Those particular ones, because of their age, because how well-preserved they are, they're absolutely unique. We want to know about ourselves. And we want to know where we came from. And we want to know what elements entered into our becoming human. Mary and Louis Leakey were a couple who almost single-handedly demonstrated that there was important early anthropology of humankind in Africa. Most scientists in the West, anyway, didn't believe that humans evolved in Africa. And it was Lewis's persistence, because he'd grown up in Africa, he'd seen stone tools lying around, and he always felt Africa was the home of mankind. Lewis was the grizzled explorer who would produce fossils out of the pocket of his overalls with a flourish. Oh yeah, now Mary was always the scientist behind the two of them. She was the one who was doing the field work and Lewis the one who was raising the funds and drawing in the publicity and the popularity. I first met Mary in 1963. She was a rather a formidable character to me. She was one who did not suffer fools gladly. She loved her cigars. She liked her whiskey. She loved her dogs. One of the dogs might come up and look at you and she'd say, Ron, I think Sammy would like uh, your potato skin. And somebody would give the dog a piece of potato skin and she'd say, no, no, he's got to have butter on it. Meanwhile, we were rationed on butter. <laughs> There were very few women scientists when she began. She ran the affairs there. She just would not tolerate bad work. And she'd, you know, go up to them and say, what do you think you're digging? You're not digging your garden and you're not digging potatoes. She was a meticulous excavator. And that's what people do now. And I think she was one of the first to use such exacting methods. 
The leak has made major contributions to the discovery of early human ancestors in Africa. They continued working at Olduvai Gorge right up into the early 1970s when Lewis died. I think returning to the work she loved for Mary may have been a solace. And not many years after Lewis died, she would discover something unprecedented. I think it was 76, wasn't it? That's right. You know, in the field, it's very hard work, and you're always looking for distraction. People do all kinds of goofball things at the end of the day. The story goes that people were throwing elephant dung at each other. And upon missing the elephant dung frisbee that had been tossed to him, Andrew Hill dove to the ground and uh, found himself face to face with a footprint. I think it was a giraffe or it was a large mammal. There were elephant footprints. There were guinea fowl. Mary herself excavated them. And it was incredibly arduous work. But of course, in the back of the mind of every paleoanthropologist, the hope is to find the hominid tracks. And it's that that was realized at Lytoli. There they were ancient hominid footprints. They were just spectacular. It is a remarkable find. It gives a flash into the past. The footprints were preserved by a volcanic eruption. A nearby volcano puffed out a cloud of this carbonatite ash. Then it rained, and the rain turned this volcanic ash into a kind of a muddy slurry a bit like wet concrete. While it was still wet, the animals came out again and walked over it. Including the hominids. You wonder what was going through their mind. What did they think about this volcano? These are our ancestors. These are the creatures that ultimately gave rise to ourselves, and we want to know what they were like. As far as the number of hominids that uh, made the trackways is concerned, there's a bit of dispute. I'm convinced there were only two. Mm -mm. I, I would absolutely disagree with that. Mary thought there were three. You can see that the individual walking behind has put his feet in the footprints of the individual in the front. <clears throat> that is still under active uh, discussion. Very few of us agree on every point of analysis, and this is how science progresses. It is, yeah. These footprints, what they did was to prove that hominids were up moving around on two feet three and a half million years ago. We already had skeletal remains that showed us that the early hominids were upright walkers. But here, for the first time, we could see the actual footprints showing the manner in which they walked upright. Bipedal walking is considered to be one of the hallmarks of humanity. If you're walking on four legs, your hands are not free to do all the things that we do with our hands. Without our hands, we could never have become human. That's, of course, only a small segment of the leaky's contribution. Mary demonstrated that dedication pays off. You dedicate yourself and you achieve results. I think she was, to me and to many other women in this field, Mary was an inspiration.
All right. So you have Mary and Louis Leakey. They are this tag team couple. She is the brains of the operation. She is very much the scientist and he was very much the one that gathered up the funds and was really good at talking, you know, to people and getting them um, to jump on board with um, their expeditions, if you will, or their excavations. So that is Homo habilis. Now we're going to get to Homo erectus. Homo erectus was called Homo erectus because they were fully upright, okay? Um, they had a rounded forehead, a single brow ridge, and they were fully upright. They are associated with the earliest hand axes and the first major innovator of stone tools. Um, this species spread over two continents. They are the longest lived early human species, nine times longer than Homo sapiens have been around. And the earliest existence of campfire occurred during the Homo erectus time period. Um, fire, of course, can be used for cooking. Um, it could be a place for social interaction. Uh, it could be a place for warmth. And it could also keep away predators, right? Um, so Homo erectus emerged around 1.8 million years ago in Africa. Um, and they developed hand axes and fire. And then Turkana boy is the first complete skeleton for the Homo erectus era. Um, so Turkana boy, it was believed um, when Turkana boy was first discovered that he, he died, of course, in his teenage years. But um, it was believed that he had a deficiency, um, maybe dwarfism or some kind of ailment um, that kept him from progressing and kept him from living into adulthood. Um, but many scientists would stand around and say, well, how did he make it as long as he did? Because this was a very harsh and brutal um, time for, for human species like Homo erectus. Um, many scientists believe that man matured a lot faster. It's, you know, kind of that survival of the fittest thing there where um, if you mature and you learn how to hunt, you learn how to gather, you um, you age faster, essentially, um, then you're you're going to survive because you have that instinct. Right. Um, but for someone with a disability, it would be very hard. Um, to survive. And so, so some scientists believe that um, this, this species was compassionate to one another. You know, you get a language, but you also get with that communication and they were able to communicate and see that if others were hurting and help them. Um, so social interaction was a big part of it. Now, this is the aging of Turcanaboy. This is just a thing to show you um, what scientists how scientists believe um, that this human would have aged or this early human species would have aged. Um, and as you see, um, every five years or every three to five years is a very fast progression, like the aging. But Turcanaboy did not um, make it to the years that they have shown in this video. And then this video down here is about wanting to meet a, a compassionate ancestor. How would um, Turkana boy have lived? But now in recent years, they rearranged the skeletal remains uh, or the spinal column. And so now they think, well, hey, maybe he did not have a deficiency or he did not have dwarfism um, because of the rearrangement of the bones. Okay. Now, Neanderthals, all right, or Neanderthalensis, okay, sorry, that's a word. Um, they are like the coolest of the early human species. Um, they were short, they were stocky, they had a jutting face, heavy jaws, heavy bones. They emerged 230,000 years ago in Africa, right, and they go out of Africa, and they stay in Eurasia, Europe and Asia, okay? Um, 
so they had flint tools. So they learned how to control fire, right? They had a simple language and they hunted large animals. So this is about Neanderthals 101. This is your crash course on everything Neanderthals. Okay, here we go. Neanderthals are often depicted as brutish cavemen, but science shows that our early ancestors were actually quite advanced. Neanderthals, or Homo neanderthalensis, are our closest relatives in the human family tree. The species lived from about 400,000 to 40,000 years ago and inhabited an area that stretched as far west as Europe's Atlantic coast and as far east as Central Asia. Their habitat reached northward to modern-day Belgium, making them the first humans to survive a cold glacial ecosystem. The North's cold environment may have influenced Neanderthals' physique. Their bodies were relatively short, with males averaging 5 feet 5 inches and females 5 feet 1 inch tall. And they were stocky, with broad chests, bulky torsos, and muscular limbs. These adaptations helped Neanderthals generate and retain body heat. Also, their noses were large and had relatively high bridges. This created a nasal chamber that warmed and humidified the cold, dry air they'd breathe in northern regions. Apart from adaptations that helped Neanderthals survive a harsh wintry habitat, the species also developed large brains. They were similar in size to modern humans' brains and were often larger. An increase in brain size may have played a significant role in another type of adaptation, culture. Culture is indicative of an intelligent species, and archaeological evidence suggests that Neanderthals had a relatively sophisticated culture. They built shelters, made and wore clothing, and created advanced tools. In fact, they were the first human species to make tools out of bone, not just stone. They also created objects that served ornamental purposes. Neanderthals are suspected to be the first humans to carry out the symbolic gesture of burying their dead and adorning gravesites with flowers. Neanderthals may have also created what may be the world's oldest cave art, which was found in Spain. Despite advances in their culture, sometime after 40,000 years ago, Neanderthals mysteriously disappeared. Some scientists believe the Neanderthals were killed or outcompeted by modern humans, or Homo sapiens, who arrived in Europe at around the same time as the Neanderthals' extinction. However, another theory suggests that Neanderthals mated with modern humans and were absorbed into the humans' much larger population. That may explain why most people of European or Asian descent have 1-2% to Neanderthal genes in their DNA. For more than 150 years, Neanderthals have perplexed anthropologists. The first Neanderthal fossil specimen was discovered in Belgium in 1829 by Philippe Charles Schmerling. However, it wasn't officially classified as Neanderthal until decades later. The first fossil to be recognized as Neanderthal and as an early human or genus Homo fossil was found in 1856 by Quarrimen in Germany. The new species was named Neanderthalensis after the area where the fossils were found, Neander Valley. Neanderthal's fossils tell us how evolution built them to be sturdy to survive their harsh environment. But their tools, art, and DNA tell us that their resilience also involved innovation, creativity, and social behavior, much like Homo sapiens today. Okay, guys, we have such a rich fossil history of Neanderthals because they are the first to bury their dead. And what's really, really cool about them is that archaeologists have discovered like bone fractures to suggest that they hunted these really, really large animals like mammoths. Okay. And these bone fractures that they have are equivalent to what rodeo riders get today, you know, riding bulls and things. So it's really, really cool. Um, 
what killed off the Neanderthals though? Um, we, I'm only going to show you what killed off the Neanderthals video. If you want to watch um, Neanderthals are alive, um, what if they had not become extinct? Um, that's a little fun video um, just for you, okay? One of the most compelling mysteries besides what happened before the Big Bang or how life began is the question of what killed the Neanderthals. Seriously, what was it? Hey everyone, Julie here for D News. Neanderthals have captured our imagination since they were first discovered in 1856 in a cave in Neander Valley near Dusseldorf, Germany. They weren't human, but they were just so much like us. We share a common ancestor with Neanderthals about 500,000 years ago. And like us, they came out of Africa and made their way across Europe and Asia, but long before we did, perhaps as early as 230,000 years ago, while humans didn't leave Africa until 60,000 years ago. We know a few things about them, like ancient humans weren't all that different from them or better than the Neanderthals. I know it's tempting to say that they were just stupid apes and our superior brains drove them to extinction, but that might not be the case. We're both smart and social creatures. Neanderthals made sophisticated tools and made cave paintings just like early humans. There's evidence that they could plan ahead and maybe even talk like us. They were not stupid guys with big foreheads. What happened to them? At most, there might have been only 70,000, but that number could have been a lot smaller. By dating bones, researchers think Neanderthals' population shrank around 50,000 years ago. This left them in small, isolated groups. Some estimates think there could have been as few as a couple thousand females of reproductive age. This was, maybe coincidentally, maybe not, around the time when Homo sapiens arrive on the scene. The two groups probably interbred a little bit. One to two percent of modern human DNA is from Neanderthals. All right, cool, so two groups mixing and mingling. What could go wrong? Well, something happened around 45,000 years ago. In 5,400 years, Neanderthals vanished. There are two events that happened around that same time that may have wiped out the already weakened Neanderthals population. A volcano near Naples, Italy erupted and blanketed the surrounding areas with ash. Some researchers think that this caused a volcanic winter in Europe. This cooling climate in Europe could have damaged ecosystems just enough to knock out the fading Neanderthals. Another idea proposed by anthropologist Pat Shipman is that modern humans put the final nail in the Neanderthals' coffin. She compared humans arriving on the scene to an invasive species. Just like kudzu, a vine that's taking over the south, outcompeting native species for food and resources, that's just what humans did. Humans' advantages weren't that many. Early humans had a lower metabolic weight and used different kinds of weapons, projectile rather than handheld, but this was just enough to tip the balance in our favor. She also put forward an interesting idea, that maybe it was the domestication of dogs that gave humans the upper hand. Once humans trained dogs for hunting, it was simply too good of a team for the Neanderthals to beat. Dogs could have helped humans track down prey and even protect that carcass from other predators. Shipman calls the dynamic duo of humans and dogs a fatal innovation. Most research seems to suggest that what are killed off our Neanderthal cousins wasn't a singular event, but a complex process that happened over a couple of millennia. Maybe we'll never know, but we can sure keep trying to figure it out because science. All right, All right guys, so what do you think? This is your extra credit time. At some point, I want you this week to send me why you think Neanderthals went extinct. Was it because of a volcano in Italy caused a volcanic winter in Europe um, that got rid of the resources they needed to survive? Were they outcompeted by the species we're about to talk about, Homo sapiens? Um, or was it just three, an intermingling between the Neanderthals and the Homo sapiens that dwindled them away? Is that the reason why there's about one to two percent of Neanderthal DNA in people of Europe or Asian descent? OK, um, so just email me your responses to that. And then here in a minute, we have another um, fun little thing you can do for extra credit. So Homo sapiens are the last hominid species we're going to talk about. They had large brains, small teeth, prominent chins. They emerged about 200 to 400,000 years ago in Africa. They lived in groups, they created art, they had spoken language, and over a hundred tools. What made them different was those hundreds of tools were not only for hunting, um, but they created things for sewing, sculpting, and engraving, and making things pretty. They had leisure time. That set them apart um, for, uh, from other hominid species. They lived in social groups and semi-permanent settlements. Um, they never 
permanently settle for the simple fact that they had to find wild plants and they had to hunt wild animals. Okay. They also created art such as carvings and cave paintings, and they had an advanced spoken language over time. Um, Homo sapiens were first discovered in the 1860s through their material remains. Um, this is something that is hilarious that I just wanted to share with you guys. Um, you know, everybody jumps on board with saving species, right? Like, oh, the um, polar bears are becoming extinct. We need to save them. All right. So what about the Homo sapien, which is the species that we are? Okay. Let's see what people say. Get yourselves ready for a turbulent election. Sometimes you got to say what you got to say in an attempt to win. Someone sitting beside you may be the next governor of Boy State. <laughs> Sorry. The United Nations released a report this week that says, among other things, more than a million species of plants and animals are facing extinction, which is a scary thing that we will do nothing about. And you know, if, if pizza was in danger of going extinct, we would go nuts. <laughs> We'd band together to protect our national pepperoni reserves. But this is something we need to act on. So to raise awareness, we went on the street, we asked people if they're worried about one endangered species in particular, Homo sapiens, which of course, <laughs> are humans, are us. We, we asked humans if they care about the extinction of humans, and this is what we got back. It's a big hot-button issue right now in the environmental community. Are the Homo sapiens worth saving? What's your take? Yes. Why is that? Just because there's a lot of animals that are extinct now that were amazing back in the day, but like, like dinosaurs, they extinct, and someday we can look back and be like, oh, we didn't save them, the Homo sapiens, right? Yeah. So we didn't save them, so like maybe they could be like the next dinosaur, because the dinosaurs hunted, they killed each other and other creatures. So. So you're saying let's not let the Homo sapiens become like the dinosaurs? Kinda. We have to find a way to live with the Homo sapiens in a way where. We don't, you know, they don't affect us. We won't affect them, kind of like in a separation type of way. I don't know what a homo sapien is. If they're going extinct, that's very sad. But at the end of the day, I don't care. It's not the fact that I don't like homo sapiens. It's just that we've always lived without them, so we don't know anything at all. What would you be willing to give up to save the homo sapiens? Great question. Thank you. I think you just give with your heart. You give what you feel. So would you do $100 a month? Uh, I would say probably 50. Have you ever seen a homo sapien? You don't know, want to know. Yeah, I saw one once at the zoo. Describe it. Furry. Yep. Big. Mm hmm Gorilla looking. He was picking his whatchadilly. He was? Yeah. <laughs> I've never seen one do that. <laughs> well, I did. Is it worth saving them with our taxpayer dollars? No, because we can use it better somewhere else than Homo sapiens. Like, basically, better our railroads or the streets or the communities and the homo shelters. Much better than Homo sapiens. Homo sapiens, let them die. Save the humans. <laughs> <laughs> okay, guys. So, another extra credit opportunity for this week. Go around, ask your family members, your cousins, your brothers, your sisters, your parents, even if you want to, um, and your aunts and uncles. Do you care about the Homo sapiens going extinct? Should we save the Homo sapiens? Okay, so go around, ask everybody you know, see what they come up with. I hope you've enjoyed this lesson. Um, I look forward to hearing from you tomorrow. Bye, guys.